So it is just about six o'clock on Thursday, January 4th. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, I want to call the meeting to order. First thing is set adjust agenda. Do we have any changes tonight? Hearing none, we're going to proceed with the agenda as written. Um, communication from the audience. I believe Harry's probably here to talk about an agenda item. Uh, just to be here to... To be here. To we be love here. it that you're here. Thank you. I heard two meetings in a row. I was hearing he was prepping to run for a Yeah. <laughs> I heard he was one of the ones that... Uh, I heard it was, it was three meetings in a row. <laughs> <laughs> oh, three meetings, you're automatic. <laughs> just to All right. Awesome. Next, uh, select board to approve the minutes from... Oh, we can add it. Oh, do you want to add something? Yeah. What do you want to add? No, I'd uh, Casey was going to do it, but I'll, I'll do it. What are we adding? Item five. Are we adding another item or just add, something to a report? Um, we need to discuss uh, a piece of equipment at the fire department. As an item five? Yeah. Potentially action needed. Fire department. Uh, okay. Piece of equipment that needs to be Equipment. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the uh, amended agenda. Second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, so we've amended our agenda to include an item five at the end. Um, all right, so next is select board to approve the minutes from last time, which was December 21st. Motion to approve the minutes of December 21st. December 21st. Second. Uh, any discussion? <clears throat> Thought they looked good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, abstention. One abstention. Motion carries. Um, next is the town manager report given by Mr. Upson. Okay, so we had two weeks of holiday. So last, <laughs> last week the phone didn't ring in my office. Maybe once. Out of four days. The greatest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> really? The phone was quiet? The yes. work he yeah. got done. But then, the day after New Year's, the phone rang. And uh, I think it started working again. Okay. <laughs> um, so, today we received the draft set of permit drawings for the pedestrian bridge to review. Uh, this set of drawings will be used <coughs> just when submitting permits to local, state, and federal agencies. Uh, construction plans are soon to follow, which will be used to go out to bid. So that's more progress on the pedestrian bridge. Good. Um, we have to get a permit from the U.S. Coast Guard. Of course we do. We're right on the yes. coast. <laughs> yeah, because the Lamoille River is in navigable water. Uh, I didn't think that I I've been in it with a canoe, so I can <laughs> I, attest. I have too. I have okay, too, so there we go. Like, not you know, there. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> no, that's true. Not there. Yes, yes. You have been? Yes. All right. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah. Um, not a lot of tall ships, though. Right. No, no aircraft carriers coming up the Little River. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, police chief advertising update. We have received two applicants for the police chief position. <coughs> the position will be posted until January 15th. Um, I have a meeting on Tuesday with a state project planner. These planners have been stood up recently to assist small communities with project priority, prioritization and planning for flood relief efforts. So more to come on that. Um, this is, they're going to help us try to get, get the ball rolling on some of the relief efforts um, and like some of the permanent work that we're going to have to do. So this is going to be like a liaison between, uh, you know, the hydraulic studies, that the state needs to come through, which we've only received one, um, something Could, like that. Would this, does, would that tie in? Yeah. Does that tie in at all to our item three with the NCRS? No, it's completely it's, separate. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we could ask for assistance for that, but I'll, I'll, we'll get into that. We'll get to it when yeah. we get to it, yep. Um, winter shutdown will be occurring at the end of the week for the current upgrade project at the wastewater treatment facility. Work will resume in the spring. April is when the schedule says they will install the new lagoon liner on lagoon number one. Our, our engineering firm, uh, Ulrich and Elliott, has submitted priority funding applications for the state's water investment division <coughs> for the next fiscal year for the current project. So we're still asking for money. Good. Yep. Good. Keep at it. So, um, the police, this is an uh, interesting note. The police chief and I attended a meeting organized by the governor's staff 
uh, two Mondays ago to discuss the current challenges law enforcement agencies <coughs> are facing when it comes to substance use disorder related crime, mental health crisis response, and dealing with repeat offender issues in the judicial system. The state legislature will be looking closely at these issues in the upcoming session, so it's important to pay attention to what is happening in Montpelier and to contact <coughs> senators, senator and representative with questions and or comments. I felt that the meeting reassured me that Hardwick wasn't the only community plagued with these issues. I have hope that we can improve in all areas of community health and make Hardwick an even, even better than it already is. So we're not alone here. I know it's a little crazy out there right now, but... It was a constructive meeting. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Is, are there, is there follow-up planned from that? Uh, there's one more set, there's one more like panel discussion, but it's really what the upper management and the government is pushing down the legislature <coughs> to look at during the legislative session. Did you get a sense of where Hardwick fits on a continuum? We are in Rutland, Brattleboro, Bennington, Burlington. Which are in big well, trouble. Only because of population. But we have no the same, similar problems. Mm -hmm. um, homelessness is a big issue in all those communities as well as in ours. Burling, or Vermont, I think, has the highest rate of homelessness per capita in the nation right now. Wow. Yeah. So. Per capita, I mean. Right, yeah. but it's still not a good statistic right. to be the highest in. So um, you just gotta keep on plugging along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Hmm. Yeah. Number one solution for homelessness, employment. I was gonna say housing. <laughs> there's there's a lot of number ones. But yeah. Well, thank you for the community is very important, and I think we have a strong community here, and we need to continue that effort. And everybody has a role in that. Thank you to you and Mike for attending yep. and tracking that. I think that's really important yep. at a state level. Yeah. That's all. Thank Signing you. Signing off. Signing off. Handing over. Next up is road form and report. We have Tom Fadden live and in person. Quick and sweet. Uh, all's good. All is good. It's really basically it's the only thing that we've been up to is just basically working on roads, trying to button those back up. Uh, I know that we probably spent somewhere probably close to eight, nine thousand uh, dollars from this last two weeks there of all the mud and stuff that we've been dealing with in ruts. I uh, we went out yesterday with the grader and stuff, tried to carve down some of the uh, ruts here and there, and took some uh, stay mat and filled in some of the potholes and some of the deeper ruts and stuff. And, Got the rolls back the best that we could, so everything's rolled back on. But besides that, everything's good. Okay. About all. Good. Like Colt said, been short, short two weeks. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, our roads are just better. Than, I've been, yeah, as good as anybody's. Better than most. Do you miss good, the snow? Like where you knock down the bridge. Do you miss the snow? <laughs> No, <laughs> and yes, I mean, for us, it's boredom. Yeah. You know, over, over, over there, oh it's just, Well, know. we've got it's some beautiful day. new winter banners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like going to a hospital and saying it's fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, said, uh, literally. Oh, my God. Yeah. That was a trap. Yeah. Yeah. They're in the hall, actually, downstairs. Well, they just come? In a box, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so before anybody else gives Tommy more work, <laughs> I'm going to move us along. Oh, I was going to save it for a new business, but... Okay, there you go, banners. I was, on, I was already on top of that. Yeah, yeah. Where you? Oh, was it? Yeah, it was. I've been looking at them all day. All right. Um, police chief must be otherwise engaged. Yep. Okay. So do you want to report anything for PD or... Just that you uh, went to the meeting with we him. We sent Andrew off um, Wednesday. Yep. Tuesday or Wednesday. Wednesday. Last day. So we're down a guy. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Can I, in a positive way, uh, the applications we got for Chief Legit, you think? Oh, did you just glance at them and say, well, these. Is there any, are there people that Never mind. are, are there people that are in Vermont, at least? I just hope that, I mean, police chief's positions right now are paying right. 
$150. So they're legit candidates, but can we afford them? Right. That, that's, that's, I knew that's where you were going with that. Yeah. It's, like, it's not really about the quality of the candidates. It's about what we can both. afford. Well, it is, but like you Let's said. Let's hope somebody wants to make a career change or a, a change in location to come work in a great town for less money. Yep. Other people have done it before. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They left a week later, but yeah. slightly <laughs> over the door, too. <laughs> oh, geez. All right. So um, next up is item one, town clerk treasurer Tanya Chase is here to discuss the time and location of a town meeting with the board. She is also very kindly taking our minutes. Okay. Yes. So the biggest question, do you think town house will be ready for early town meeting? It won't be ready for town meeting. It's out. The project is out to bid right now. Gotcha. Okay. We, unless we decide that we really want to do it there. Right. Out. I don't. From my, it's president primary too. School votes. There's the link view thing. So I think it'll be a lot of people. I think through. it'll be ready next year. Okay. So good with elementary school. Are they? Are right, they're good with us? I'm sure they will be. I just want to check. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Only if we promise to do it at the town house next year. Okay. <laughs> as soon as the stage is ready for us, we're ready to get there. Okay, yeah. that's great. That, that's the only, yeah, we're just waiting for the stage to be handicapped. She deserves accessible. it. She's not getting there long enough. Yeah, yeah, I mean, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. we're all excited about the, well, I think. She we're, all excited about the, so. <laughs> we're all excited about the addition and the upgrades. Right, and that and that'll yeah. provide that what we need. That might be happening, but, you know, they might be able to get started. Well, then, regardless, it won't be done. So it's definitely improved dramatically. Yeah. And then the trailhead, the parking will be a little bit better delineated. All that stuff will be better next year. Okay. 10 o'clock still? What do you usually do? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Second Tuesday in March. Um, March 5th. Yeah, I won't ask that. No, first Tuesday in March. First, yeah. Tuesday. first Tuesday in March, which is the 5th. Yep. Okay. 10 o'clock. Okay. 10 o'clock at the elementary school. Tanya to confirm with the elementary school. Yes. Perfect. That all sounds you want good. To do a pitch for people to get their petitions if they're going to run for. Yes. Yeah. So petition serves three select board, one three year, two one year. Hazen has one three year and then two two years remaining on a three year. And I need those. Oh, I didn't bring it up. Twenty ninth. Yep. That's what you told me. By five p.m. I've already turned mine in, but if anybody wants to run against me, I, I welcome them. Um, so we have one, one, your Wiz is not running, correct? Right. I'm so not we have a, bit, a, I've had a few people pick up. Great. Really? And I, Sherry's the only one who's brought it back, so bring it back, please. But yeah. yeah. Good, we got some action. Right, bye. For the school board, too? Nothing for the school board, yeah. Jeez. And what about the elementary school board? Do they also have? They do. I, I don't remember that one. But they have some right. openings too? They do. I think Okay. two, maybe three openings. Theirs are not done at town meeting. Theirs are done at their annual in February. Oh. I don't know the date. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. But for town meeting. Town meeting. There's still time to pick up a petition yep. to get on the on the ballot for a select board seat, you only yes. need 23, 23 signatures, 23 signatures, 23 signatures. on a form, yep. and um, and they're due the 29th, 29th at open till 5, 5 p.m. Yep. And Hazen, same thing, Hazen Hazen's Union, the same thing. Yep. or also we got to have some people run. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is item two, follow-up discussion with Hardwick Rescue about the location for a new building. We have a couple people. We have Harry and Mary here from Hardwick Rescue. We had talked last time about um, a proposed location at Creamery Road. I know that at the end of the meeting, at least my recollection is we said we wanted somebody to vet the space that you proposed and we're going to go out, and Danny didn't call me. No, but, well, we did, though. We I did call They went over and paid it. So we had the staff, as it turns out. So, so the location, so, and then I further uh, really would like to have our plan for that property um, laid out before we start parsing it up anymore. Um, 
but Ms. David Upson, can you give us just an update on you and did you go out with Kristen? Kristen. Yes. And tell us a little about what you found on the ground over there. So we basically, where the rescue squad had given us this rough drawing, I don't yeah. know if I have it in here, but you have it. The building doesn't, it's, if you look on the other page, it's up behind the cold storage building. So we spray painted where we think the building would fit. Which is down which off, is off the bank, closer, down on the flat. Down flat, closer this way from the cold storage building. Right, right. basically um, right behind the gravel pile. That's the yeah, the corner, the, the front mat. corner of the building would be like right in the middle of where the stay mat is right now. The other one would be just, you know, 64 feet or whatever it is. And then it would go back into the bank slightly. Um, there's the old, so the setback, we measured the setbacks, and then there's the question of the old road, and then the question of the state leased land, because the section where the current road is basically in a rectangle all the way over to the salt shed is leased land from the state. Yep. And they will not allow anything built within their leased land without an act of Congress hmm. um, and then the so that that the old road the way that's laid out would be basically right the building would be right on top of it so there would have to be some finagling of how that road is laid out some discussions with the state about the leased land whether a new right-of-way can be laid out there so it's, it's not as easy as just putting stakes in the ground. There's going to have to be some agreements in place if a building were to go there, and then the road would need to be moved. So the, the Creamery Road is a formally, formally laid out road? Yes. Okay. And it's basically, it goes behind. It goes, yeah. It yeah. goes straight. It goes where, straight around. Where the buildings used to be. Right in right. the cold storage. Right through the front yeah. Right, as depicted on this Correct. map here. That's where the road is. Yeah. Yeah. Although that's yeah. That's and where the road I, it. I conveyed all this to Tim Nesbitt. Okay. Over the phone. Okay. Yesterday. And what about the effort to dig up any plans that might have been drawn five years ago? I haven't received anything. And and you searched your office as well and mm -hmm. couldn't find anything. The only thing I found were all the plans for the cold storage building, and I don't know if that was. Yeah, that's not. Right. No, because that's something we just whacked up. And then I found a similar map like that with some colored buildings put in place. But that was it. No conceptual drawings or anything like that. So the things that I noted over there when I did my walk around was that corner is pretty small. And when you put a building there in a road there, it's going to, I don't know how it's all going to fit. The other thing is, is I also noticed we're using that space currently. Yeah, so material stockpiled there. Well, right? yeah, and equipment and stuff. So we got to, you know, think about. I agree with it, Eric that we need to we need to figure out the base plan of that property before we start giving it away. What if we put I it think. where the Quonset hut is? Because we know that that's going to come down, and we're going to sell it to somebody for a bunch of money. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, so that's going to, yeah, I got to believe that's, that's antique. <laughs> Everything <laughs> shifts over to where the current rescue building is and the town garage, all that kind of shifts over maybe. And then the so that's the place thing. where the Kwanzaa hut is is so, a pretty big space. And I think, though, where that, where that line of thinking gets you is that there is space on this property for everybody, I have to believe. But I'm not quite it's sure not what well the layout used. is yet. Yeah. And uh, I hate to. Hear. <laughs> yeah, it's not what you guys want to hear. I, well, no. First, one minute. Uh, Harry, could you I, just I, give your name? Sure. Yeah. Harry Bissett. Uh, Hardwood. Um, I appreciate the quick response. And that's what we were asking for. Um, because we needed to know that before we started campaign committee, you know, and all of that <coughs> stuff, we needed to say, well, what are we doing? Yeah. And where are we doing that? So that was the number one thing. So whatever you come up with, 
that helps us rather than having a meeting next Monday night. It's like, well, what are we doing? You know, we're not approaching people to donate money to Hardwick Rescue when we don't even have a space for it. So that's what prompted mm -hmm. us coming and saying, mm -hmm. okay. Well, it's certainly not simple enough process for us to be able to say yes to it because right. there been and, too many other people working. And two weeks ago was not the first time that we no, interacted. And right. so it was just, okay, after months going by, and it was like, well, okay. And that's all fair enough, but we just wanted clarification on where the town I mean, select we, board is. It seems like we need to hire... If we were confident that we had a big enough facility for the fire and, and highway over here and still have storage and everything, then there quite possibly could be off the side of the, you know, closer to the cold storage, you know what I mean, off that end. Mm -hmm. There's probably room there if we didn't need it for something else. Well, the space uh, lend does that. lend itself with the road going through to also phase, because obviously we can't afford to re to move fire and town all at the same time anyway. It would be a big lift to do all that at once. The space does lend itself to build from that corner over, because that's undeveloped right now. So that way, if department still has it safe, similar to EMTs, you still have a building you can use while we're putting up something new. Right. There's a big value in that. Right, but they were very uh, adamant about they want to move forward. Yeah, yeah, what I'm saying is it, say, it seems like we need to hire somebody to help us come up with a concept um, that, conceptual drawing. that basically fits well, in Well, I, I agree, but I'm just saying that they they want to move. They're so this, <laughs> this was the third or fourth or fifth site that yeah. we considered, mm -hmm. and there's been talk about the, you know, the first step was do we just add on to the current building? Right. And of course, sometimes add ons end up being more expensive than tear downs. Mm -hmm. and so we run into that. And then is the site a good spot? And then what do we do while, during construction? And so there's been you know, good conversations about where we might be temporarily housed while it's being built. Um, so all those things were discussed, and then it was like, oh, but if it could just be a swap, well, that would be so seemingly ideal, but that, would, right. that doesn't mean that it's ideal for all the parties involved. The building across from, from the, the old building there, across from them, is that on, do we own that or is that leased? It's not in the state lease. I don't think it is. That, that so we own it. We own that land. So yeah, the, but the you lease. probably can't take that down and put something else no. up. We won't get approval from the state for it. We won't because no, because it's in the right of way that we that, we that would write. be a tough. That was we, his question. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about That's just taking that building down and straightening the road out would would gain 50, 60 feet in front of their existing building and give them a lot more room in that corner. Oh, I mean, I. I, I know you don't want to have to tear the building down and be without a building, put a new building up, but redevelopment of that corner might, might I don't know. Or even if absent that, that would really help, like even if we can get a conceptual plan that shows rescue over in the corner that they propose, what you just mentioned about moving that road gives us a lot more space to put a town right. garage where rescue and the town garage are now. So. Maybe. Our answer to these folks is what we're talking about tonight. And our in, I believe our answer should be, just as one person, that we will try to get a conceptual plan for this property as quickly as we can. With, with that building in mind? With that building in mind. Well, that's going to be the end. I mean, that space over there won't be part of our big building anyway, regardless. It'll be, you see what I'm saying? No, but there's... If we put a big building, we also have to keep be cognizant of our sand pile, our right. other piles. Yeah, yeah. Like so that's, I'm on, okay, I agree with you. Agree. Well, the overall plan that we were coming up with, Danny, was we take the sand pile and we rotate it where the concept it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Take the store, the cold storage building where it is now, you add on to that for the new town garage. Yeah. Where the old town garage Which is way? right now. Which, Which way? Toward the sand flyaway. Okay. Because the other side, you know, if you wanted to, you can have to keep either a new south shed yeah. or right. keep using that building that you're talking about flattening. Uh, so rotate that around. And then, like me and Oak was talking about the other day over there, we could find the town garage as it sits now because there's plenty of land out back. 
Mm -hmm. That could be all fire and rescue straight through there. Dude, so I don't know if you multiple guys follow that. Buildings, though, or, or What's that? Yeah. Multiple buildings? Yeah. Well, and like, like you said, there's no way you're going to be able to afford the whole thing all at once. Fire, a fire and EMT building. Yeah, well, you know, but then we're back to three heating systems and three showers and three vents and three that. Three we're doing everything. it Danny's right. yeah, looking for a comment. Does it doesn't make sense to me, but I'm one. I have a question on this. Has anyone heard that that Quonset building is actually historical structure? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. I mean, I, cause I picked that up from is somewhere. It it's been discussed. It's been discussed, it's been discussed. Okay. It's been discussed that it's is a historical it, structure. Anyway, what is that? Yeah, How does that affect? Absolutely. Do you well, want to Congress? It might be, we might be able to sell it to somebody, you know, let them take it apart and take it away. That's, that building was bought by the town in 1946. It is World War II Army surplus. That's one of the it last was, ones. It was put up in 1947, you know, and laid out as the town garage. Um, Less than 30 years later, it became inadequate, and they built that 1972 building. And, and we're, what, now 50, 60 years <coughs> since that. Um, Quonset huts were all over the place right after the war because they were cheap, they were easy, and we needed a lot of different buildings. But they were, have been gradually been dismantled. This is one of about... I don't know, a half a dozen of these original World War II buildings that are still left in this state. Um, Can it be taken down? Technically, it could be taken down. They were, they were developed, I mean, it's just corrugated iron and they have these, these squirrely nails that they were put in to keep it together. They were designed to be put up, taken down fast by people with no experience. Um, there's a huge hole in the back of it um, I hadn't heard about the selling it. There's a lot of metal in there. At one time, I was throwing hysterics on the floor about you're not going to move that building, yada, yada, yada. Oh, but I think that we cannot, not everybody agrees with, this, with me about this, like Tracy Martin, we cannot stop what the present needs just to be reverent about the past, unless it makes sense. And having that building right there just makes everything about working with that territory difficult. Eric has suggested maybe moving it down uh, where the old, down oh, ER Fletcher shed, where, where the Fletcher shed used to be. Um, I like. You know, if, if it's not going to be there, I don't have any thoughts at all about where it should be. And maybe just selling it for scrap or for somebody to reconstruct it someplace else is a good idea. But it is definitely a historical building. It's one of a type that is disappearing. And, you know, when we get rid of it, it will just be one more of the species that has disappeared. Um, for the record, I'm not... Um promoting selling it for scrap. I'm talking about its historic value, that there are people that would potentially want it. So that, does, that doesn't affect the master plan? Or, no. A, a question, so that was, so I had heard that wrong. <laughs> it was a historic yeah, structure, yeah, but yeah, that's yeah, a moot yeah. point. Yeah. Um, and I recommend anyone that hasn't ever been inside there at night yeah. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the stuff scurrying around and you know? all. Oh, it's great. No. Uh, uh, I guess a question that we will have at our next meeting is when do you think a realistic um, breaking ground or what, you know, are we talking about 2028? Are we talking five years out? Talking 10 years out? Uh, so it, if we go back and say, okay, let's salvage some, we have a lot of enthusiasm now, and a lot of that enthusiasm is aging, and we're trying to harness that, and that enthusiasm includes willing donors, 
And so how do we keep that enthusiasm? Because that's also what's driving the squad in retention and recruiting is that wave of energy. So and, and so everything goes on hold for five or 10 years, I'm concerned that some of that enthusiasm. What I would love to do is I would love to engage um, an architect type person to, um, to help us develop a conceptual plan. And as part of doing that, um, doing a, a needs assessment for the various groups that need to be there, to figure out what size buildings they need and what the access needs to be. And they, they have that, they did that scoping study. But we need for that their own, for their building. Yeah. So that so we have but that we for could town garage and the but we could plug that into whoever right. we hire. And we need yeah. to do that in the town garage and the fire. But I think once I, I feel like all we need is a plan that we you know can work with you guys and be like, all right, so this is these are some I I'm thinking we might get you know one or two or three configuration possibilities. We can try to pick, pick the best one. I don't think we need to get to breaking ground necessarily to know what's available to Hardwick Rescue. We may be, before that we should be able to say, you could build your own building here. You could join a, You could join fire in a building here. You know. When? No. To be asked. Right, but I'm thinking that's not years. I don't know. We need to yeah. contract with somebody. It'd be nice to have a plan before the next fiscal year. Definitely, but I, I, I mean, how summer. long? How long does it really take? If we could get somebody on board, how long does it really take to turn around? I don't know. I don't know the answer. And, I don't and how does that fit in with other monies that might be available for that? So we already have Alice, Alice and Lowe from our regional planning uh, corporation is working on a grant application for us to do just such a plan, to pay for a plan. So we already are going after the money to pay for the plan. I don't know how long the plan takes to work out. We could probably get a, we could probably reach out to some local, I'm thinking I could reach out to a local so, person and ask like, just like how long right. do I think something like that would take? Are we, are we ready to do that? Are we ready to say we need? In the fall? Yeah, but are, Inside so when, the first thing anybody I would take is going to ask us is what do you want? What, what are your needs? That's the needs assessment. And that, that you need to go with Tom, somebody needs to go with Tommy down to the fire department and look at what well, they have and I talk about what they need. That's true in the town garage. And I don't yep. think we need to have that discussion. All of it, yes. So we need somebody who will. Before we develop anything, you yes. know what I'm saying? They're not yes. going to be able to say, what do you want? Well, That's the needs assessment part. You know, first <laughs> you have to fig they have to figure out what we need. Let's do that. So while we that figure That's all one thing. Okay. Hire somebody to do the needs assessment and the conceptual. Yeah. So we need to figure out where the money comes from to hire somebody. Oh, also, Allison is working on. Allison <coughs> goes. We're also setting aside money in the in the budget this year for. for well, Harry, I can't get any better answer than you can get out of it. So <laughs> don't feel like that all right. Right. I'm all asking right. a relatively right. simple question of when <laughs> and getting the just the. You know, it, it, to me, I hear that and I think, oh, five years minimum. I've been on the board, we were just right. talking 12, 15 right. years, we've been talking right. about it. And, and, and that's all fair enough. And so that's why the enthusiasm for us is to stay within our mm -hmm. territory and where it overlapped to investigate. Yeah. But if, if they don't, that's we don't clear to me. It's, <laughs> it's, it doesn't, we're not trying to drive your decisions. Yeah. Right. Um, but if we're looking at grant funding for mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. for this needs assessment, then that means that has an amount of time that you spend it in. So I think you know we could feasibly say that we're looking at you know a year this year to eighteen months. Hopefully to this have year. a plan and have a path forward. Yeah, and know what it's going to cost. Yeah. and figure out how the phasing happens and what happens next. That's, that's the other part that we're going to ask for is a rough cost. Yeah. yeah. And then does that have to be, uh, have the town sign in on that? I mean, does it have to go to the townspeople to vote on an expansion? If, if we need a bond. We need a bond. Yeah. bond. 
But if we just get if we can just get to the point of the plan, mm -hmm. yeah. then in working with you know keeping you guys in the loop the whole time, taking whatever information you have about what you need, trying to get that all laid out on this property. It's we don't you don't need to wait for us necessarily to to move forward if you're building your own building and we say you know like oh and we work out a plan that makes a space if you're if we're cohabitating and your heart of rescue is leasing uh, finished space then yeah I don't I'm not then in that case I'm not sure exactly what our timeline is because we would need more grant writing bond vote. That they're, is, they're not really interested in that. They've, made it, they've told us that several times. Because of oh, but that was just perhaps whoever was at that meeting, whatever that was. Well, the time, <laughs> that timeline, that time in my opinion, is a, I, I understanding more tonight why you guys are in such a you know, hurry, because obviously we've been at it 15 years and still haven't got anything about it. So. Is there any reason why we can't say where we can't just say that corner, we don't have the design for it, they don't have the design for it, but probably something would fit there in some configuration. Like, what? That's a lot of oh, But it may not be the best case scenario. That's why. But we don't, there's too many. That's, that corner's not, I don't know. I, I don't think we should okay. go down that road. Do you want me? I think that we have to get permission from the <coughs> state of Vermont, the rail division. Right. Or so there's a lot of before we can we can be there's a lot of hurdles there. Yeah. Those permissions I assume would also need to be had for any yeah. anything happening there. Up there? I'm yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> so that's not something specifically you know that though that road has to be dealt with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. In that's some way, that's time. not you know, that's not ruling out our request. No. Because of the road, because you're going to have to do that anyway. Right. Yes. But that being said, so what we really came for, but as I recall from the meeting, is that we wanted some assurance. Um, and that doesn't mean that we needed a detailed, okay, this is the specific thing. But in going out and asking others, we needed some assurance that the town uh, would support our rescue. I, I get. But I don't even know what I'm asking for in that way. Um, we came up with that swap because mm -hmm. we felt like we had something the town might be interested in, mm -hmm. a fully functioning building, mm -hmm. standalone. Now, if we need to add on or change our plans, or in all honesty, there are other places outside of town mm -hmm. that would be interested in hosting it, mm -hmm. and it's like, well, then we maybe pursue. You know, I, you know, I can argue yeah, it's in the perfect spot right now, which is what I tend to argue. But others would say, you know what? It doesn't need to be in the center of Hardwick. It can be six miles that way or eight miles that way, you know, if we're just talking about a piece of land. So those are just discussions that we'll have. But at least we have a better sense that um, you guys are headed in a positive direction, but that we need to decide what we need to do. And if it's completely independent, because we already have that spot, then that might be, you know, a lot of people were in the teardown mode versus add on. But if we could add on something that gave some hope, at least housing for the full time, year, you know, through the night folks, we might be able to add that on. But, uh, I don't know, sorry, talking to you. We, I have a question yeah. just to throw another kink in here. <laughs> so Mary, can you say your name? Uh, Mary Hall. Um, so where we are now, is there any possibility down the road when you guys start looking at what you want to do in expansion? So if we were to stay where we were, is there any possibility of getting land off to close to where the town garage is, like another 20 feet? At I mean, some point, my, my yeah. question is, the reason yeah. I'm asking this is because we've done preliminary drawings for redoing that building where it is, making it bigger. And one of our wants is to add another bay in, because 20 years down the road, we may need another mm -hmm. ambulance. We may have more paid people. So right now, I can't get to 
I can't get a full bed in there, which, you know, that would be great. We could still have a paramedic fast car. But to have a bay that was big enough to hold another ambulance would be great, and, but we would need, you know, a little bit more room. And I, I don't know, and again, I don't know if this is even feasible cost-wise. Is that something that we could add on later once you guys got your town, your town garage going and, and all the <coughs> other stuff that we could add on, get that property and add on? I mean, I know that's down the road too, but it's something for us to think about if we're going to stay where we are. I think when we look at this property, I mean, anybody can step in, but I think that when I look at this property, the only building that makes sense to really keep probably is that cold storage building because it's so new. The newest one, yeah. Right. Um, but like the town garage that we're operating out of now, unfortunately, just structurally, it, it no. just it has to no. go away. Yeah. Because it just is, it, it will never suit the needs of the trucks we have today, not to mention the trucks it's, we'll have tomorrow. It's a tear down. Yeah. It is. There's yeah. nothing. So, so if you want another 20 feet, that makes well, that, right. then, yeah. then we just slide over. Well, you could have, to me, I would, I would think we'd be better off giving them a little more space around the existing building than we would trying to relocate it. I, I think that's something that we could say. We could do that Unless, sooner, right? Well, no, because our... They could do that on their time. It's their building, they can do the addition. Right, but and even if they needed 20 feet... I but think they, that's we, in your plans. You but, have plans for that addition, right? On both sides of the current building? In, in the back? Yeah. Yeah. From where, yeah. Right. But so the, it's, the, it's not... The buffer zone and parking yeah. and train right. parking and all is right. factored in. Mm -hmm. But in terms but, of the footprint of... Yeah, but those is, things should improve when our project comes to light and the old salt building and the old town garage are gone things like parking will be will exist right correct i mean there's 30 spaces up there now and that's, right that's what yeah. I, and but yeah now open up. there'll be more yeah and that would jeopardize anything that we're going to do because everything we're going to do with the new buildings will be on that side so to me, that sounds like it'd be much, although it may be more costly for you folks, I'm sorry about that. It sounds doable in a shorter period of time than anything else up there. And if, I mean, and there's, in the community center space, the senior center space, the old hospital, there's kitchen rooms, individual rooms with doors, it's heated, there's Wi-Fi. So, I, I think I've offered up that space to the rescue for overnight. I know it's just a short drive over to the station, and I know that, that was asked of us when they were talking about doing the addition the, the, and moving the, the trucks down to the fire station. So that place is available for overnight guests. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. And there's there's the individual the old individual there's room for I mean I, I slept there during the flood. And why are we so why are you write the property line chain? Right. It was actually, I got a good night's sleep. Except for that. No kids. Except for no kids. <laughs> no, I have no yeah, kids. Yeah. Yeah. But that's available in, in, in any construction right. or long term. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank you. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know whose idea it was in the first place, but this sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it came to be that there was the idea of swapping out, um, but that's that has gotten the discussion going to where I think that this will end up allowing us to proceed. I mean, we could, I'm sure we can work, figure out what needs to be done over there a lot easier. I think it's just time frame. That's the biggest, that's where we're not aligned. Right? Yeah. I think if we were a couple years ahead yeah. of where we are now, yes, we could be working with you a lot more constructively. Yeah. Yeah. And we'd, we'd like to identify you. Right. We would definitely be more than just getting started within five years. I would say we'd like to break ground in five years or less. Yeah. But yeah. you know how public projects go. Yeah. Yeah. And especially when you go, what's our item number, our budget item for the next one? Yeah, that's what I was saying. That was the following one. 
Our budget's oh, looking a little bit. I'd say, I'd say keep sending people to the meetings. Yeah. Would it be helpful <laughs> for somebody, like if we had two members of the select board or myself and a member of the select board come to your rescue meetings? Um, you we could join one. rescue. <laughs> oh, I've thought about it. I've thought about it. Okay. Um, Good. We yeah. have a, yeah. a yeah. building committee meeting next Monday night, yeah. which would be. But but we can convey what's been discussed, yeah. and at least come back with more information than we had before, which was basically we can't do anything until we have a better idea. Yeah. yeah. And so at least now we have. And an I idea. I did tell Tim, and I I kind of went rogue on this without the select board's approval, but no. I did say that if we could do a one building, and I know this, we kind of went back and forth, we did time. one building with two or three bays for rescue and quarters, I think the town of Hardwick and the voters of the town of Hardwick would lease that to you for small cost. I, I don't want to say a dollar. But I think it would be uh, uh, that, and you could take that off your budget, your annual budget, is we would house you here in Hardwick. And I know that being under the same roof as somebody in, with the town budget, I know that, you know, that's where that, it gets a little dicey. And that's a good topic for another. Yeah. Exactly. But there is that option as well. Yeah. Good luck. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep doing what yes, we keep, do, and you guys keep back. doing what you do. And, uh. Keep coming back. We, this is, honestly, I feel like this is helpful because we really need to push our project, and it's been back burner too long. I, I think we would have been a lot farther had we had that July flood. Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> I, I, really sorry. Know, right? I really do. Yeah. I mean, that, that sent us back. Oh, my I know, that sent your whole years office. Nine after I mean, yeah. I was still here when I called Forest and Parks. I read. It's like it's been nine years. I don't want to hear well, that. Well, it's. I didn't it say that. No, but same with July. We still, still have temporary bridges and. Yeah. Okay. It's eaten up a lot of time out of your office for sure. All right, so we'll work on trying to figure out what a time frame is for a plan, and we're actively pursuing funding for planning. And we will have a meeting and then invite anyone I mean, we can like yeah. to a building committee I mean, meeting <laughs> after having that. Yeah. And yeah. So, so let, let it sort out a month or so and, and then we'll see where we're at. That would be great. I really want us to be as supportive as we can be because we really value your service in the community. And we know you, we know you guys are. Right. We know it's, okay. it's set. It's Everybody's on a different time, timeline and yeah. we know it's hard. And it's hard to appreciate, but it's, it's kind of Opie's theme, but it's been my theme for a long time, too. This is a special community, and one of the ways it's a special community is the volunteerism. Mm -hmm. And that is what is disappearing in every other community. And it's under siege here, but we're not going to let it happen. What's that? We're not going to let it happen. No, but this is, you know, this, this is the volunteers doing this. This is not the paid staff. This is the volunteers that want to set this up. Yeah. You know, totally. So, so we can yeah. get that. But, but it is a unique uh, community in that way, where it might not make sense in other communities. Just absorption by the town might make sense. But in <laughs> this community, we don't want to. <laughs> but it becomes a necessity in some sense. Right, right. So. Well, it, I'm not going to be very popular with this one, but. <laughs> but you're going to say it anyway. <laughs> no, we're, re we're reaching the time limit on this. Uh, yeah, but uh, unfortunately, when I look at you folks, the rescue right now, I I understand why the communities that have it's gone away, why it's gone away. <laughs> and Hardwick, unfortunately, love you all, all you folks, all the folks, you know, we it's going to go away because you guys are the only volunteers. That's the problem. We're not going to let it. Yeah. Well, we're going to work hard. 50 years. I know that, but, well, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. You Let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about it. You've got to have a positive attitude. In the positive well, a positive attitude is not going to get it done. Mm. I, I, I agree problem. with that in some ways, but that doesn't mean we can't have a hybrid model. No, I, I, to, I to this support you. I just wish that there was more young people that wanted to get involved. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. But that's what Harvard Rescue has. 
right. we have young people that are volunteering. Good. Yeah, that's which, good. And that's what we want to keep. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's great. All right, so we should just keep this conversation. To ourselves. No, we should keep it going as time goes. we like, keep coming back and we'll come to you. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. I've reached my maximum. All right. Uh, please feel free. Please do stay on if you're interested. Yeah, I guess. Uh, you don't have to, but, but we're, we'd be happy. It's really exciting. As long as you, I'd get out of here before the budget cut. Oh, no, that's the part I wanted to sell for. You don't want to be the one sitting here. All right, so. I'm going to move us on to item three, which is discussion regarding emergency watershed protection sponsorship for three properties identified by NRCS National no Natural Resource emergency. Conservation <laughs> Conservation Service. Conservation Service. Service. Watershed protection. Right here. Anyway, what's oh, it's right there. Let's, right. let's get her done. So I make a motion. No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. You're not. I just want to. <laughs> If you, I don't think that's the way Robert's rules work. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You can make but a motion. Anyway, regardless, you can do a point of order. No point of order. No, go ahead. Um, Tell me. I think this is informational. There's a large match on this stuff. If you look, this is action, action, Jackson, right there. There's a large match. We got it. We do. So this is basically um, okay. I'm just, I'm just gonna paraphrase what Opie told me earlier in the day, but basically is looking at some properties the NCRS, um, NRCS identified where they basically would, would armor the riverbank to protect three existing properties. What this does for the, for the individual property owners is obvious. It helps them maintain their places. What it does for the town is it keeps those properties as viable properties where people live keeps them on our grand list, as opposed to the next flood makes it worse, and then okay. there's a FEMA buyout, and then it's not on our grand list. OK. okay. So that was great. we went to eight properties. Out of the eight properties, there were three properties. They came back, and they provided us with a budget of $420,193,000. Of which $123,586.25 the town would have to come up with as sponsors. So there's a ma there's a 25% match to this, and that's where it's we should go. Uh, we need to figure out where we're going to get this match money because so we're, we're where budgeting. Are the properties? Uh huh? Where are the properties? Um, in Hardwick. There's okay. They were in our packet, yeah. the addresses. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then mm. I've re since received some other information from the program that they don't have um, enough engineering. The engineering workload brought on by the July 23 storms, plus our regular farm bill commitments, the NRCS cannot provide the engineering services to design the EWP projects in Hardwick. Therefore, we ask that you hire, hire a private third-party professional engineer to complete the necessary design work, construction, and oversight. It is possible that the technical and administrative expense will exceed the, the TA funds we can obligate requiring Hardwick to contribute resources to complete the technical and administrative work. So basically, then we're at risk, and, or it's on the no, town. We're not at risk. We're, we're on the hook. That's, yeah. the, that's what I mean. We're on the hook. Good, they're telling us it's going to happen. Go hire, go hire somebody, and it may cost more than hiring us. Right. Um, there's so, just a lot of. I, I think it's a great program, and I think that the the properties <coughs> that are eligible, I think would it would hugely benefit. Um, but I think that we should be engaging with the landowners and the property owners to see what and I know that resources are tight for a few of them and one of them might not even want to be in the program. Can we pick and choose? Can we go back to I have to find out if NRC. we can eliminate Can we say we want to do this one and this one but not that one? Right. You'll find out. Yeah. And How much of a hit would it be if we lost all three properties? Grand list. On the grand list. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know Exactly. Um, and I don't need an answer right now, but I think yeah. it's a question <coughs> worth factoring well, in. Well, as we did, yeah. I don't, I don't worry. So we're looking at a couple hundred thousand dollars or more. 
and the project management and right. the engineering. Right, we're looking for a quarter of a million engineer. dollars. And we have a taxpayer time. money to right. individual landowners. I'm not sailing that boat. You were the one who made yeah, the motion. Yeah, you wanted to make a motion. Oh, well, I thought it was. Go, go, go! It worked out well. <laughs> I think it would be really different if we didn't have to do the engineering. I would be for well, this. I would be for this if it wasn't on us to do. That's a huge. Let's just look it's, at it's another. Project. It's another more project management that yeah. we don't have. But a we don't for. have we don't. the quarter of a million dollars, so it's not a matter of whether we would like to do it or not. Because even if we wanted to do it, I let's go to page thirteen here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We don't. We just mm -hmm. plain don't have it. Or any way of getting so I'm right now. I'm looking at trying to get creative with one of the properties. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk to FEMA because they they had they sustained damage within the home. So we could potentially discuss with them if they could cover a match. Uh, yeah. Uh, if, if, if an individual this pro to this program was sold to me right after the flood by state and federal partners saying, hey, send out a letter, ask for their help, they'll come and check things out, and, and this is the result of it. Bad, bad business. Well, I'm glad you did. Yeah, you know, Now we know. But it's not, um, it's not, the, there's, there's more to the solution. And it's, can the individual property owners go to USDA, perhaps? Or we need to, they could be, like, the we're the grantee, we're the sponsor. This is the USDA. Yeah, it is. But if the, if the homeowner, if the landowner wanted to cough up the cash and we could do it, then I, we, I would sponsor them. So this if, is where... If the individuals yep. all wanted to pay the money, I'd be yeah. more than glad to kick in a little so bit. So this is where equity comes into play, though. Right, right. So I, I just want to point out yeah. that um, documents are due back no later than Monday, February 19th, and um, this is fairly late-breaking mm -hmm. news coming to us. Right. And you're still gathering information right. and talking to landowners. But I, I wanted to put this in front of you because yeah. it's yeah. important to, for us to consider this and not just make a motion. Yeah. Right. Well, why don't we at least just talk to landowners before our next meeting? And yeah. And, and check on what the grand list, how it's going to affect the grand list. Yeah. 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 Things, a couple other questions. Mm -hmm. And then my only other question would be okay. if these three properties are eligible and we have another flood and something happens to those properties, what is that a concept? Do they have some sort of consequence? Like, do they not get, you know, I don't know if there's. So, one of the properties sustained damage last week okay. and documented it. Okay. So, that'll just add to the cost of the repair. And those, those, those are pretty high level uh, cost estimates, right. you know, from all the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. So, that it true. may not cost. Yeah. But it is. It is a major bummer that they are looking to us to basically GC the project right. and hire the engineer. Yeah, mm -hmm. because of their workload. Keep it yeah. clear, Okay. No action. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Is that action required? I said the action, action would be. I was pulling the trigger. Keep I don't going. Know what possible action. <laughs> Be yeah, you gotta simmer you down. I'm gonna start I did simmer you down and you yelled at me. Listening. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make a motion to pass the next one. <laughs> All right. Um, next up is item four, the moment we've all been waiting for <laughs> is a recap of the budget. Um, and I, I would sum it up like this I would say that absent some major change tonight, uh, we're looking at nearly a 10% increase in our budget over last year, which is a big increase. Um, it's and, not 30%. Hmm? It's not 30 It's totally not 30%. I think that the stuff we have in here is reasonable. It's just that when you add it all up, it, it just comes to a, a really big increase. I mean, there are some big numbers in here. And I know that folks on the board, I know, well, of course, Casey and Opie have been working on this for weeks, and Casey's done a ton to tune it up and get its actual numbers. I also know people on the board have been looking through and trying to find places we could potentially save, but the trouble is 
in order to make a real impact on such a large number, you have to remove like two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's not removing like five thousand ain't gonna get done. It's not gonna do very much. Um, in fact, so one percent is about thirty seven thousand dollars. Right? So even to go from nine point six down to eight point six, you gotta find thirty seven. Um, and I don't know, I have one question, which probably has an answer. If Casey were here, and probably we don't have an answer without her. But I had, I had a question on the police budget. There's a retirement expense increase that I thought was kind of big, and I'm sure it's legit. I just wondered about it. In the police budget, there's a big jump in retirement expense. Uh, they off the, they've increased their <laughs> Beamers, con the Beamers has increased their contributions, the employer paid con contributions. It was the same, it was the same in, in all. All budgets? Yeah. I just only noticed it there? Yeah, it wasn't as much in for the town, the office expense, or the... Oh, yeah. Yeah. It us. goes up across. Huh? Yeah. That's like, uh, I saw, I did a little research on Beamers. It's like the state decides it basically, yeah. right? It's like the, yeah. Okay. It's the state municipal retirement system, so they, we got a letter saying that the, our contributions increased. In case you just plugged it in. Yeah. Got it. We really have no choice on that one. The only other thing that I... You can't get out of Beamers either. <laughs> right. found that. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like you, if you're a, a town employee, yeah. you have to enroll in that. But it is, okay. It is a good benefit. Sure, it's great. Okay. But I don't like to be you know, told that you have to do it. I know. So the only other thing that I saw, and maybe this is, somebody can tell me I'm out of my, out of my tree. But um, one of the big things that's driving, you know, a huge, a huge increase what you is, looking at? I'm looking at the capital equipment purchase schedule. Um, and a huge increase is that we have to put a lot more into this every year because of the increase in the cost of equipment. And because the, basically this capital equipment fund has almost a zero dollar balance heading in and we have big purchases scheduled next year. So I wondered, looking at the ones scheduled next year, could, could we put off the police cruiser purchase? It's 48,000, could we bump that down to the year below and have two police cruisers the next year? Where in that, so just in the totals, so in 2025, we're forecasting a total of 268 expenditure, but the next year, 26, it's only 92,000. So it seems like it would help even things out a bit if we could push that down and we could maybe Take that out. I'm not really sure if that works. It's just an idea. Why do we have the excavator? That was this current year because we bought it this year yep. in 24. This is fiscal year day, not year year. So 24. It's the so year we're in. We're going into fiscal year 2025. And we're looking at the dump truck and the police cruiser as the two expenses. Oh, right? Yeah. They're coming up in this yeah. budget. Right. And we already did. The, oh, I see. Yeah. But there's no way we're going to be able to get a dump truck this year. But are we going to have to pay for it this year? No. Uh, my food is wait, 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 on wait. that, Eric. Wait, so that wait, so just to clarify, you're talking about the dump truck four that's scheduled in 2025. <coughs> right, this year. Okay. No, the next year. No, this coming fiscal year. Yeah. This is actually fiscal year. 2025, so come July 1st, yep. we're in fiscal year 2025. Right, and that's the budget we're working on. So right. this is dump truck four. So that's the dump truck that's supposed dump to be truck four. this year. Yeah. It's not ordered yet. No, 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 no. It's just that I can order the chassis right now, but yep. it ain't going to do us any good. Okay. I mean, we can get it in the spring. Okay. But to do a body build and a complete build on it, we're looking at January of next year. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. So we're almost... We're almost going to have to push the trucks out like a year just because we're going to have to kind of switch around the planning on this just the way the body builders are doing. Yeah. Because there's no way that right. we can trade a truck in right. to get our 60000 for right. it and be the entire winter without a truck. 
So you're so saying we're going to have to hang on to the we're truck that we have. Hang on to that truck. Yeah. Then come towards you know late winter of next year. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. The next winter. In fiscal or 25. The chassis, yeah. Then have a body build the following summer. But when do we pay for the chassis? That would be the following. In 20, right. will it be 25 or will it go into 2026? We yeah. could probably pay for it in 20, well, the year 2026. Yeah. But will the fiscal year 2026? Yeah. So it'll be after July yeah. 1 of 25. Right. It'd still be in this budget. No. He's it saying. Get it, a winter, <laughs> late winter of 25. It, it, uh, it's still in yeah. fiscal year 25. It, it, it would be, but I mean, it's getting the reality point of just we are a year out on getting right. getting bodies and stuff. Yeah. Like that. But then you'd also be That's getting a new truck at the end of the winter. Schedule so, around around it so that we get we order that other truck in twenty twenty seven. Right. Wait, which oh the next one that comes up? So is it more? It's, yeah, because we skip two years on big trucks. I mean, yeah. I guess either way. You know what I mean? We might want to look at spacing it out a little more, Tommy. You know what I mean? Instead of going three years without two years without a big truck. Well, I guess we're going to. But anyway, I. So one thing I can say is this capital equipment schedule. Well, I know this for a fact that F two fifty we got. We don't have to get rid of that. Right. Well, I was thinking. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that truck. Or the one fifty either. In, yeah, and the one fifty either. But let's just leave those as placeholders. Card. Oh, you know, we'll play that card when we come to it. But you see how we you order? You got one coming. Yes. You'll get twenty six, and then we we skip a couple of years. So anyway, I'll, what I was going to say is this. This capital, capital equipment, as we traditionally started out hmm. ten years ago when we started all of us, mm -hmm. or us three, mm -hmm. we wrote checks for things. Mm -hmm. That's what this was for. Mm -hmm. That's changed now, to the point where we're we're leasing stuff and things like that. You see what I'm saying? So the only thing we're leasing though is the stuff we leased before, right? The the. Oh, no, it's an everything. Greater motor. Yeah. Right. But the cruisers are we, are we buying? Are we right. buying the cruisers out? Right. Are we? Yeah. yeah. Right. But and we used to write a check for those things. The greater and the loader? Right. Right. So that's what I'm saying. So it, it's the, the it's kind of changed the way we, and we didn't necessarily do it every eight years or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes if the equipment was running good, it lasted a little longer, it didn't get traded. So. We're not doing things the way we used to do things, and we can't get things the way we used to get things. My point is, should we look at how we're funding these things any differently? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. But given the, the things that we're used to, the reason we used to use this don't exist any longer. Right. We can't just order a truck and get one. We can't just stroke a check for one. We can't get trade-ins anymore. All these things are affecting how this schedule works. That's true, but what this schedule does enable us to do is just give us an idea. I guess. Give us an idea. Allows us to save towards our big purchases rather than borrowing for them. But we are borrowing. Right. We not, not on the, these trucks. Not the full price. No, no, what, are we? Well, we've got. So it sounds. It sounds like what you're saying, Danny, is that we need to not tonight, but we need to look so, at look relook at this purchase schedule and think about the equipment that we have, how we're buying it. How we're going to be buying it in the future because things right. like the greater might be the greater and the load are, are those those dollar amounts are now in your operating budget correct the lease payments the payments right, right. Yeah. so we still have five hundred fifty thousand dollars in here in twenty thirty nine or whatever um, but we're not going to that's the only thing though that we're leasing everything else on here we've been buying right, but my point yeah. being is in this schedule that's a half a million dollars that, Down, yeah, yeah. that we're not going to use because we're not going to write them a check we're not stroking a check for it we're right. going to we're going to mortgage it we're going to pay payments on it just like we just did yeah yeah so yep. so that don't need to be there that 550 don't need to be there so right. that's 600 000, you know that's yeah mm -hmm. that, that makes a difference that makes a difference and i'm just saying that Yep. We're not necessarily using this as the way that John Jewett and I, when we put the time in to create this, the factors we were using are much different now. Right, right. Times change. And you not got that this is all we, this is all we got right now. But I do think that this is still a great tool. Oh, I agree. I, but I think we can make it. But but you're right. Like the loader, we probably shouldn't have the loader and grader in there <coughs> if we're because not. Because that's something new that 
we just started doing moving enough payments into the operating. For just for those two, but then right. there are other trucks. Oh, so what we, okay, so you guys were just saying though that truck six and seven, the 250 and the 150, yeah, very that. likely will live longer. They probably don't well, need. Yeah, they only got like, well, they should live the way all of the past ones have. Just live until, until they're done. Until, until we take Live until they're done. <laughs> that we usually run them. You know what I mean? They're, they're not. We don't have to go to Burlington every day with them. No. So you can run those. You can maintain them. We can get to the point where we take it down to Donuts and they put do a brake job on it. And yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's, it's aluminum. It ain't gonna rust. And so those things may not need to be in there either. So now well, what the things that we need, like the big trucks. Yep. You know, I, we're not going to get, what's truck two? Is that a 10 wheeler? No, that's not. I sure is. So that might be a close, but um, I don't know. I just, my but, point being is this is a little bit. So I come back, I think this is great to go through this. And when we think about what this amounts to, right? Mm. We did, we just took $600,000 anyway, more than that, out of this thing right here. Yeah. So that tells me that we have to put a lot less into this capital fund. So I'd say well, you're, need, you're almost we right. Need, we need more than four grand in it, which is what we have right now. Well, yes, but So that's yes. kind of the trick of where, we're, where we are for this coming year, is that we don't have, you know. Well, as long as we've got four grand, I'm not worried about four grand this coming year, because it's four grand next year. Is I'm worried about it because in order to land grand. with, four, with 5,600 at the end of 25, where we need to put in 265 so that's my concern and that's why i was asking about the police cruiser yeah, could that I be put off we put those numbers up so high yeah do you see that why jump from last put, year to this year yeah why not because, because next year we're we're tight and then the thing is if we could ease up on next year in some way if you look at the account balance Things look a lot better, and then the next year we're tight is the year of that loader well, grader purchase that you don't want anymore. Well, shame on me for not, not, Wait, where's not paying attention to a hundred fifteen thousand dollar increase. So, in the, so the question is, if we if yeah. we basically yeah. took out the police cruiser, that would save us roughly fifty grand. So that would leave the well, it just puts it out a year. So but I we need to rework this and 60. see how it works. Right. I mean, Are you doing that? Yeah. So okay. just and then. So if we no, I don't want the account balance to go up. I want to contribute less this year because that directly affects our budget. That's yes. the 265. I yeah, I want to take that 260. Let's cut that back to 165. Oh, we can't do that and still get well, replaced dump truck four. Well, well, that's the question about dump truck four. Number. It's you not a real said number. that it was going to do that. Well, well it, it, is, come it out could of the be budget a somewhere number. else. It no, could, it could it be could. a negative number this year wow. at the end of the year. Why can't it be? It's just a number. Because it need, as long as there's available cash to balance it out. Because we're actually spending, we'd actually be spending. So, uh, boy, this is late. I'm late to the game on this one. So you said 165 instead of 265? That's what he said. No, that's what he said. I said, what if we took out, what if we just backed it down 48,000, whatever that is, to. Um, that's 220. 20, Eight? No, 227? That would leave it to just dump truck four. It would be 220,000, which is what we're spending, theoretically spending next year. And Tommy's telling us we did, probably are not going to need that money until 26, right, Tom? Right. right I think we ought to budget out to 2026. 26, I'm just that because there's, there's no way with the body. I agree. And because that, that's, that's going to be the following year. So if I can order, to order that chassis the spring of 2025, and That's then it. come in towards the middle of June, and then that way we can, I'll, you know, I can yeah. get ahead of it and say, tell the guys, look, I want to be in the body build for July 1st next year. Yeah. We can do a complete trade-in and everything else, and not worry about not having the truck down for the winter. That so puts us out. And that'll so to take care of the two-year gap thing. Yeah. Right, because like the F550, where it's supposed to be in 2028 this school year, we got to actually bump that down because we were actually a year and a half longer on that truck. Yeah. So why don't we do this? Why don't we for this year, because this is what we're talking about tonight, why don't we for this year bump the 220 to the next year, leave the cruiser so we're putting in something, right, 48? Yeah, I hate to get out of the cruiser cycle. And then, and then maybe Tommy and Danny or whoever else can rework the following years. But for tonight, we're just voting on that. 
next year's number. Oh, right? I would say, and that this may be an unpopular thing to say, I would Shh, say, I do, it all the time. <laughs> I do um, that it is possible to have a special meeting before our next meeting yeah. Yeah. and give, mm -hmm. Kate, give Casey a chance to chew on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that would make a really big impact because, on this. Because the other thing I don't want to do is I don't want to put us in a situation where all we're doing is kicking the can down to just yeah. next year, and we're right. sitting here next year facing this same yeah. big well, knot. So not, what, I really want to work through this capital budget. Yeah, and it needs to be some changes if we're going to. Yeah. So it's not, it's not, I don't see us going to 270 in the following year, 275, 280. I, I, I see that. We'll see how that. Good. Well, see how that's carrying a really big balance. Yeah, that's why. So right. So it might not be needed. Not, you know, you take that number right there alone out of there. Yeah, you're. Yeah, take out the loader grader. You and don't then, need that. You yeah. don't need nine hundred thousand dollars. Right. Twenty thirty-six. Right. You know what I mean? You only. You but that's only why need we need three hundred thousand dollars. That's quite a change. So when's that special meeting? I'm not sure. Um, I'd like to. I'd like to. Be there. Yeah, I'd like to. The 18th. It's be. When does it need to be? Um, well, the 18th meeting was when we're going to do the warning, so. But they, isn't the if, town report due? Town report, so if the town report is due <coughs> the 23rd. Okay. So if we didn't do the warning on the 18th meeting, then there'd have to be a special meeting between the 18th. And because the warning needs to have so a budget. So we still got another meeting. The warning has to have so the budget on it, so correct. So if we push out the meeting until the 18th, yeah. then we'd have to have a special meeting yeah. following yeah. that for the warning. But if we had a special meeting for the budget, then we would that, keep the... That would probably be easier, because yeah. between the 18th and 23rd, it's going to be pushing it to get everything done. Yeah. And Casey do the, you know, for the rest of the report. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so a special... We're all looking at Yeah, that. a special <laughs> meeting for the budget yeah. would be better then pushing it back to the 18th because we need to follow, we need the warning deadline to yeah. still be on the 18th. Mm -hmm. okay. So can, so it should, would it be okay with folks, I mean, knowing that Casey's had a family emergency, that's why she's out and so should we, it would it be all right to leave it a little bit flexible and make it when, or do we know when I she's going to be back? I can call in anytime. I might not be able to make a day meeting, but I can call in and I can stop. We could have a night meeting, but I'm just wanting to leave some flexibility to be sure. Next Thursday night? Sure. Yeah, we're going to do next Thursday next night. Next Thursday night? Yeah. Next Thursday night. It's a date. We'll have we'll cookies. We'll, <laughs> we'll tentatively say next Thursday night and hope that works for her. If it doesn't, we can push back into the beginning right. of the next week even. Yeah. <clears throat> right. And then if we do it next Thursday night, maybe we can take one of the February meetings on the schedule. <laughs> or Thursday. We'd have three meetings in February. No, we only no, meet the first and first third. third. <coughs> oh, right. Oh, so we have an extra. Oh, yeah. OK. Why did I think it's this is every other? Yeah. OK. Do you like us? I have one other small budget. Yeah, good. And it's small. And I feel like we talk about this every year. But just for cemeteries, we are always asked by Fairview and Main Street, and I don't know if we already had a conversation about it, but every year we decide that they're not a town-owned cemetery. Mm -hmm. So they, they are town-owned. Or are they are, Fairview is? Partly. No, part, man, of, part of Fairview. Yeah. Part is, of it is. Mm -hmm. right. right. Okay. <laughs> part of it's Catholic. We have a cemetery, com a com we've <coughs> appointed people <coughs> to run those cemeteries. Okay. They're still our cemeteries. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's the difference. But I like where you're going with this. Yep, I do. Keep, carry on. Yeah. My, just my question was, it was, again, we talk about it, but each cemetery has their own budget. Yep. Each cemetery has their own fund. Mm -hmm. Like Sanborn from sales has mm -hmm. their own money. Mm -hmm. So, and usually they ask for a lot more, like 6000 is not very much, but it's, I just don't know if it's setting a they're actually, they're actually, we've denied their request for more funds. They're they did last year. We did. Yeah, we've done we've done it for like three years. We've yeah. denied it. So I guess I'm just trying to figure out what. Which cemetery? Sample. This is specifically for Fairview and Main Street, right? The yeah. add-on, the five, six thousand dollars. The five, cost of five thousand. What page are you on? It should be like forty, forty-eight. The one that's for the fire department at the top. Sorry, it's um. And but there's line is this items. Like, is this mainly mowing? Is it? Yeah, so the cost of mowing has gone up. Okay. For, because so. their person who did it before is no longer doing it, and they're, they've actually hired for. Keep going. 
for Fairview, they've hired the same sexton we have. Good, right. keep going. But they're, okay. And for Main Street, I believe he does that one, one too. Word. So he's moving. No, he's, he's in the sexton. line item he's somewhere. I okay. don't know he's he's the yeah. That's the guys with the white trailers. Yes. Doing that. Yeah. They're, okay. They move cemeteries all over. Yeah. So this is just for me. And so their cost to keep the cemetery up and going with the mowing has increased. Okay. And that's why they've asked for more. Okay. Yeah. And they, they're actually, they're, we need to figure out how to get them taken care of in the spring before the fiscal year changes because they're, they're not going to be able to afford they're, they're at zero balance. The town cemetery is under I received, I asked, requested it, and I asked for what, because we hadn't gotten anything since COVID, and we're still missing the last year. And so it's been there there was some pushback yeah. when I asked for the financials. Yeah. Yeah. And we need the financials before we start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it was told that uh, this has never been a problem before. I don't know why we have to produce this. Yeah, well, that's not a yeah. reason. Yeah. Not I agree. Answer. Okay. Thank you for okay. asking. Yeah. And we expect them to be forthcoming. Mm -hmm. I have some of them. Yeah. No, I'm not looking to you. I'm looking to the cemetery commissions. <laughs> we expect right. them to be forthcoming because um, yeah. we, we requested them. Right. And then there's the uh, possibility of us taking over those cemeteries. I don't know how that would work, but I think there's some bylaws associated with one of them that has to be family. But the way that the sexton was hired for them, the historical, you know, the, the how the financials work was a little kind of under the radar for my liking. Unconventional. Yeah, well, no, it was, yeah, I don't, but if we're, it's the way it was always done. I, I don't think that's unconventional. It's just yeah, not, the, I don't, it's not the way we're doing it now. The way that was always, <laughs> that is like the worst statement that somebody could say. Like, not to, for you, you know, for you, but this is the way we've always done it. Well, that's, that's why, but it used to be yeah. the grave digger took care of the cemetery and made all the money. Yeah. That's all I meant. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. The way they used to do it is it's not the way we do it. So the benefit today. for us doing it is that, is that then we would also be getting revenue for that, right? To pay for the mowing. To pay for the mowing, to pay for whatever. So if it's a part of the town, then that's then there's then it's not just twenty three thousand dollars going out. There's actually some. Right. I mean, we're up. paying the same sexton right. to do work, and we're paying them twice to do right. Yeah, sort of. I, as long as I, I know I was going to ask to deal with the cemetery, I would have <laughs> taken the job. <laughs> that wasn't the other duties as a side. Cemeteries and dogs. Yeah. That wasn't the job. Dogs. Yeah. 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 I had to deal with that in the first We haven't had a good day. dog case in a while. Shh. <laughs> no, we have a lot of those. We have a thing. Well, we have a good animal control officer. Excellent. Larry. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, and send him to a train. So, there's a good public servant, I'll tell yeah. you. He takes the jobs that nobody else wants to deal with. Yeah. And he, and he does, does, does a good job with them. Yeah. So um, I propose that we move on from our budget discussion, that we revisit it next Thursday night, mm -hmm. pending um, Casey's availability. I have a sense that a bunch of us are going to be looking at that capital budget to figure out how it is going to cash flow over the coming year. Yeah. Well, I was just looking at it. It's going to make quite a difference if we take that. I if mean, we move we some stuff around. Over a million dollars in, in 38. I mean, that's 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 a lot of put up. you got to put a lot of nuts away to get to a million dollars saved up to check <coughs> one year. And we're not going to do that. We're not going to save. There's no sense of saving half a million dollars for, for something that we're going to borrow. Because we are going to because we did not put a dime down on those fish time, did we? Which one did I Greater and uh, just trade ins all we put down, right? right? Right. Yeah. Which we'll do again. Which which if you're financing is the way to do it. Okay. Okay. We're gonna move yes, sorry. I said we were gonna move on and I didn't move us. All right. So I'm gonna move us on.
Thank you everybody for that engagement for that. So item five. Item five is the fire hey, we department. We may have helped ourselves a little bit too, by the way. Good job, people. <laughs> With the bottom line? Yeah. Yeah. Fire department equipment. I don't know if I'll want to talk about it now. Fire department stupid. Turn to the um, Capital Fire for the Oh, geez. Oh, Here no, we it's go. not a big, this isn't a big one. Okay. Purchase or anything like that. Which is what it? we want to do, uh, the ATV that we have down at the firehouse or whatever it is, the UTV or whatever you call them. Yep. We actually want to get rid of it and trade it in for a bigger one because the one we have now, we're actually carrying over 700 and some odd pounds on, on it. And it's only rated for 500, so the front tires are floating off the ground. Uh, so this is something that we use quite, I don't know if it's quite often or not, but it's definitely designated for the rail trail and it's definitely designated for hunter rescue and stuff. Uh, we have been to Woodbury to Craftsbury, you know, Greensboro with, with, within the You guys still have just an ATV? Yeah. You're going Ranger? Huh? You don't want a range? Well, we want something bigger, Danny. Something <laughs> like that. Out there too. What's that? There's still some grants out there and stuff for that too, I think. I, I saw that. Yeah, it's like uh, twisting their arm and leg. From who? From from a manufacturer? From their, yes. Because yeah, we Blair talked has, about that. Huh? We talked about that. Yeah. But, yeah. So you're proposing using some of the capital, capital yeah. to, to do that? Yeah. You, that's all you're asking for is use some of the capital to do that? Yes. Okay. Up to, you, you'd up have to, to about thirty thousand. You'd have to approve the purchase yep. to thirty thousand. There's fourteen in their capital and four thousand in their special revenue account. There is enough money in the capital general fund overall, just not in that specific line for fire department equipment. So it would come out of the account balance then basically. Yeah. I make a motion that we give the fire department thirty thousand dollars to buy a new safety apparatus Check it. device. Just authorize. Yeah, authorize them to Let's spend it. Spend it. Second. 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 Yeah, she said we would just carry a negative in the following year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Second. Any uh, more discussion? Do you know? Do you know what you're gonna? Would you like to purchase? Have you identified a rig? Actually, get a thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they they do have several of them in, in stock and stuff. So we're, yeah, we just want to do this part first instead yep. of getting ahead of ourselves and stuff. Yep. But you know, we've been searching on this stuff for weight and everything else. So. Okay. And this will plow a back road all the way along. Oh, that was easy. This all right. Uh, all, right. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And thanks, Tom, for bringing that to us. Yep. Um, any uh, reports? Yes. Um, HardwickGazette.org is the new website for the community-owned nonprofit Hardwick Gazette. Um, if the Gazette has your email address, you will receive in your inbox on January 10th the most recent edition, the first edition of the first new Hardwick Gazette nonprofit business model. Um, we know this much. It's going well so far. Um, take a look at it. Get behind us. We think we can save the newspaper. Yay. 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 Any other reports? The um, bid is still open until January 8th, which is Monday. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Not Tuesday. For the townhouse project. Any any takers? I don't know. Okay. Good. Uh, new business or old business? Those beautiful banners are going to go up downtown. Yeah, so I heard. <laughs> There's a sidebar. Anything Rumor else? We're on the street. All right. Banners going up. Uh, thank you, everyone, and let's adjourn. <laughs> I'll gavel us out. There we go.